push the button. But but I don't want to push the button. No, but I don't want to push. Push the, the button. I don't want to push the button. Push the button. No 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 no. Well, push the button. Well okay. We're here today in the campus of Lansing Community College in the uh, academic and office facility uh, in the in a drawing classroom, and we're talking with Dennis Preston. Dennis, thanks very much for allowing uh, Creations to come and, and take a look at you and <laughs> and see your artwork. And uh, I understand we're going to get a get a demonstration of your your drawing, uh, yeah. Dennis. You're a, a cartoonist, character <laughs> artist, uh, illustrator. Um, just really run the run the gamut of being able to use your drawing ability. That's true. It's true. When did you I, first start drawing? First grade. Uh huh. Somebody brought a book to school with Woody Woodpecker in it or something, and then. I was looking at it, and I go, oh. I said, I can draw that. And I didn't know if I could really do it, and I just started drawing them. And I started drawing things like Popeye, and start watching cartoons and draw more things. But basically, it was jumping right into cartooning first mm -hmm. before doing realistic drawings. Mm -hmm. And did you take any, have any formal art training before, uh, after uh, first grade? Did you take an art, art, art classes? Art classes in junior high and high school. Mm -hmm. Ran out of art classes in high school. They put me in a room by myself. Then I had three art teachers coming in there and tell me what to do. <laughs> you know, and they and they give me challenges because of, you know, they go, okay, you gotta do a painting but you can't use black. And I was so used to using black. Mm -hmm. so I'd like to outline things in black and just fill it in or something. But, mm -hmm. but yeah. <laughs> and, then, oh. and then after high school, uh, how did you continue with your uh, art artwork? Well, actually, I started freelancing in high school. Oh. Well, no, before that. The actual freelance job that I first did was in 66, and I was about 14, because I started doing things for local bands, and I was painting drum heads for them, the concert posters. Mm -hmm. But the real, the real painting job started in 68, and I was still in 11th grade. And I was doing more things for bands, but I was also doing some other things for local people like Len Stubman. I was doing things for the Nature Center and things. Mm -hmm. um, Tonight, my very special guest is Dennis Preston, cartoonist extraordinaire. Um, but before we get into that, uh, let's tell the people at home just what the secret word is. There it is in your TV screen at home. Say the secret word. <laughs> Win a free pizza from Bilbo. And you might be wondering if this event is a bit early this year. Actually, it is. Michigan State has switched over to the semester system, so the whole event was bumped up 10 days, and events here will be running through August 9th. And we're going to tell you about today some of the things that have made this festival so popular. We're going to start with the music. You can see a warm-up band up there practicing. Over the next 10 days, you'll see some featured groups tonight. Starting off, country star Ricky Van Shelton and another country group warming up for him, the Remingtons. Tomorrow night, you can look forward to BB and CC Winans, a Motown gospel duo. And how about that food, including the Best Chefs of Michigan contest and many other vendors dotting the festival com complex. And Art, you might notice this gentleman behind me busily working. He's all part of the Michigan Fest, and we'll meet up with him a bit later. What are some of the things that you have to think about before you start working? I mean on a poster? Mm -hmm. Okay, if I were doing a concert poster, I would have to have photo reference, mm -hmm. you know, of whoever was performing. Sometimes they didn't have that for me. And when there was times like that, I was doing things like this. Um, <coughs> I would just do a drawing and stick it up there. Anything that's going to catch um, the eye of somebody so they'll look at it. And this, these style of guys here actually there was an artist named Stanley Mouse and another one called Ed Roth. These two posters are in their style. And I was kind of influenced more by Roth than I was Stanley Mouse, but that's what these are based on here. But that kind of artwork, you know, just something to grab people's eyes so they're not just walking past words. So I try to incorporate artwork whenever I can. So when you do have a, a photo reference, what makes you decide if you're going to go to something that's, you know, very re realistic to something that's more cartoonish? Is it, do they, or character, like, do they tell you what they, what they prefer your style, or you just decide? I decide. Yeah. Or if it's a bad photo to draw from, but mm -hmm. they're good enough to see how to exaggerate, then I'll go this way. Uh, if it's a really good photo, 
and I can get some detail on it, but then I'll do something that's more realistic. Now it looks like uh, not only do you do you have the ability to really draw really well, but you've also got some, at least some of those look hand, hand lettered. Yeah. And how many of those how these are? I mean, what are we looking at that where there's some hand lettering? In the beginning, there was a lot of hand lettering. Yeah. And then when I found out about dry transfer type, started mixing that in there. That's dry transfer. Mm -hmm. This is hand lettered. Um, this is all hand lettered, except for the logo for the radio station. Right. But everything on that was hand lettering. This is all hand lettering, except for the name of the location there. So in the beginning, there was a lot of hand lot. lettering. Oh, thanks for coming back. Uh, we're here. Dennis Preston is here. Thank you for being on the show. Well, thank you. Dennis, thanks to have you here. Well, thanks. Um, you're a cartoonist and an artist. Yeah, cartoonist, artist. And a teacher. And a teacher. And a musician. And a musician. And a songwriter. And a songwriter. Um, a dad, a husband, good friend. Really? Uh, <laughs> okay. The list goes on. 339-437. Call us up if you want to be a good friend to Dennis Preston. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so you've got quite a, quite a name around this town for, uh, for the artwork that you do. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah just, I can't help it. I'm not out tooting my own horn, but... Just uh, came with the territory, huh? Yeah. When did you, <laughs> first, when did you first realize that you were, um, you were artistically inclined? First grade. Oh no! Really? First grade. Oh, were you were one? You, you, uh, <laughs> you started drawing the Mona Lisa one day? Or? No, it was more like uh, Woody Woodpecker and Popeye and Cecil and geez, I don't know who else I was drawing back then. Uh, Flintstones weren't out yet, but <laughs> <laughs> I know the band likes Flintstones. The band was playing Flintstones. Um, yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, we had um, the guy that does cartoon control room on. They played Flintstones for him, but he's in the cartoons. Um, so that was pretty early, what, that's five, six years old, yeah. seven years old maybe? Uh, no, I started school early, so it might have yeah. been about five. And so you've been doing um, art ever since? Yeah, I just knew it. I knew I wasn't a fireman and I knew I wasn't going to be anything else. I just knew I was an artist and it just stuck. When did you start be doing caricatures from life? Okay, caricatures. My first, my first job that I could have taken, I didn't take it, was in 1980. And it was for a radio station. It was for a huge party that they were going to do. And at the time, it was Dick Teachout that mm -hmm. contacted me about doing the caricatures. I had the ability to do the caricatures. I didn't have the confidence to do it as entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people can understand that part sometimes, that when you're out there doing it at a party, it's entertainment. It's different from doing something uh, as far as like a, an art show or something. So I had to be able to sit there and do it for hours, people being entertained, people standing in line. So I turned down that job. The second time that I got called to do something like that was when the circus came to town. And I thought, this time, OK, I'm going to try it. And that was in 84. Mm -hmm. And you're from, from the last area to start with? Yep, I'm a native. Eastern High School? Eastern High School, Patton Gill. Mm -hmm. Foster, that was it. Yeah. Um, what, um, wh when you're, you know, it's easy to say that somebody's a cartoonist or an artist or a commercial artist, but there's, I'm sure there's a lot of variation there. Um, wh when we say that you're, you say that you're a cartoonist, wh what does that mean? Well, a lot of the work I do is cartooning. I'd say more than half of what I do is cartooning, but it's not all entertainment type of cartooning. It's more commercial art cartooning. Um, I guess the other thing that would fall in line with that would be the caricatures, mm -hmm. because that's still cartooning. Sure. But I'm. When people think of my name, they think cartoons. You know, it's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I don't know why. And a good morning. This is eighty nine point seven WLNZ and LCC TV. We're with a, uh, a guy that's been around for quite some time, uh, Dennis Preston, uh, probably best known for his caricatures and, uh, and also has a brand-new CD. Uh, Dennis, how you doing? I'm okay. You I'm okay? okay? Yeah, I'm okay at the moment, yes. <laughs> Dennis, I'm awake. Dennis, you've got a, a brand-new CD, and caricatures is what I remember you for because you've done a, a few caricatures of me over the years at various radio stations. Yeah. And I remember when you put one together, this was, yeah, 
can't even remember how long ago it was, but I said, Dennis, if you could put a little bit more hair on top, that's I appreciate right. that. Remember that? That's right. <laughs> and you did. And I said, great caricature. <laughs> yes, that's right. But I you, remember you saying that now. Yeah, that's been a while ago. <laughs> but you, uh, you, you're you, doing that, and you're also a, a teacher here at LCC. That's right, too. Yeah, I've been here since uh, 77. And what do you teach? Humorous illustration. And is there is there a, is there a lot of people getting into that? It well, it's part of a prerequisite if people are getting into animation. Okay, but at one time too, if they were getting in, uh, if they were going to do like web design and mm-hmm. getting into comic books and stuff like that, it was it would help them out in that area too. Is that is that, is that unusual for a uh, community college or a college to have a course like that? No, no. It's, okay, uh, you know, a lot of them have. Uh, cartooning classes or comic book kind of classes but mm-hmm. I don't I don't think it's unusual but I think because of the age group now a lot of them are into comics and For anime sure. and right. stuff like that so it's So you have the class pretty full uh, filled up uh, most of the time most of the time. Is that right? That's got to be a fun class to take. It gets wacky in there sometimes. I'll bet it, I'll bet it does. I've seen some of your caricatures. You you really I mean it goes the you run the gambit. I tell you it's in, it's incredible. Well, I'm going to be doing the caricatures down here next week too. It's spring spring fling. fling. I was wondering. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You do that every year, don't you? Yeah, for the past few years. Yeah, it's been happening every year. I thought so. That's great. Well, let's talk about uh, your new adventure. We were talking before we got on the air, and you've been a musician since uh, the late '60s. Yeah. And uh, what what type of music do you? What is your genre? How would you describe it? Well, is there's no certain category for it now. But if I were to call it a name, if I were to give this project a, a name. I call it Prague folk. Prague folk. Okay. It's now, a what Prague you, rock. Tell, tell, me, <laughs> tell me a little bit about Prague folk. What is Prague that about? Prague folk, I would say, is more acoustic based. Okay. And at the same time, it's not, um, even though the kind of instruments that we're using are kind of considered folk instruments, mm-hmm. it's not really Americana sounding either. This album kind of touches on different kind of international feelings, too. Oh, okay. So like the, that one I talked to you about earlier, the, the Celtic one, there's only one Celtic one on there, mm-hmm. but there are some that sound kind of Middle Eastern. Really? There's, a, there's a jazz one on there. There's one that has more of a Spanish feel to it. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you write the songs? There's three songs on there that were from another project, okay, a side project, and mm-hmm. we decided not to use them on that, and we put them on my album, and then I put more instruments and parts on there. Oh, I see. Okay. So there's three songs I would say that are joint creation. All, all the rest are my songs. Are they vocals, instrumentals? A majority of it's going to be instrumental. There's four or five songs with uh, vocals on it. Okay. You said unusual instruments. What type of instruments are you playing on there? On this one, we have uh, two different kinds of dulcimers. They're they're mountain dulcimers. They're not the, the hammer dulcimers. Really? Um, let's see. The, well, mandolin... Banjo, sweet stick. Usually people go, what's a sweet stick? Mm-hmm. Uh, what is a sweet uh, stick? Oh, <laughs> you were, you were, I, do, do I say it where there's an opening for somebody to say that? People well, go, I, what's a sweet I stick? Gotta, I got to tell you, you know, you, you, you led me into that one. I mean, what is that instrument? Okay, a sweet stick. <laughs> Remember, we're on radio and television too, okay? Uh, okay. All right. a, no, no, a sweet stick know, is an instrument kidding. that's part dulcimer okay and part kind of like bella Laika looking it has like a little triangular kind of body mm-hmm. and i think these hippies in michigan make them i think that's what i was told <laughs> we have hippies in michigan <laughs> back in the woods back, yeah. <laughs> they went back in the woods that's it's like whenever the deer get chased out from different things the hippies get chased back there you into go the woods. there you go but it's like uh it's fretted like a dulcimer mm-hmm. so it's got it's missing some notes but it sounds almost banjo sounding. Interesting. John Engler was sworn in as our state's 46th governor. A crowd of more than 1,000 supporters stood by to watch as Engler made it official. The swearing in ended James Blanchard's eight year stint as head of state and began the transition of power. After the swearing in, the state's first couple were greeted by over 1,000 people at the inaugural reception at the Michigan Library and Historical Center. Children also took part in the festivities and they told us how they feel about our new governor few years ago that you did advertising your cartooning class. Yeah. I remember uh, like these, these, this, this guy who was uh, hippie cartoons with the laid back guys with their legs way out, you know, trucking guys. 
Oh, okay. Did you have a, a thing out like that? I had one. I had one where it says, uh, how does this grab you? And what it was is like a hippie looking cartoonist at his drawing board, but King Kong's hand was coming in and grabbing him uh -huh. back yeah, like I that. that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, that's a real, uh, real eye catcher. Well, that was, I liked that one. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. And I had another one, but I kind of, I didn't really get in trouble for it, but I was <laughs> told afterwards that you have to uh, submit the ideas uh, before printing them off because uh, <laughs> some people... LCC? Yeah, yeah, they took it wrong because it, across the top it says, do you have what it takes? And people couldn't read the word cartooning underneath this warrior-looking Viking, and he had a big pen in his hand. And the next thing that they could read really easily, it said LCC. You know, it said Lansing Community oh. College, and then people skipped from, do you have what it takes? And then they read that part, but they didn't see the word cartooning because it was in chrome and all this and rocks and... So after that, they made some kind of rule where anything has to be okay yeah, before it's printed. And then some of the parties that I do, where these celebrities are, show up at these things, and then they, you know, they're usually chicken to sit down. They won't do it. You know, I'm going, come on, you guys, you can sit down. And I think it's because you know they don't really want people to be laughing at them. Right. So I can understand that. But another story for you. So I'm there drawing this, I'm drawing this guy, the guy's sitting there, and behind me is his brother-in-law or something, and it's like a, a New Year's party or something. The guy I'm, I'm drawing, he's pretty drunk, and he keeps moving around and stuff, but the guy standing behind me is his brother-in-law, and he's there trying to make him laugh. And he starts to make him laugh, and then the guy's getting ready to throw up, and he, and I part my legs really quick, and he throws up on me, right? Not on me, but right between my legs, down on the floor. And I had to move really quick so he didn't get me. And then later on, I'm drawing <laughs> the brother-in-law, and he's sitting there. And then I hear this thing behind me, you know, kind of going, huh, 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 I go, is he behind me? So it was the puker. The puker was standing <laughs> behind me. I was going, oh, no, you know. Mm -hmm. That's... That would be a horror story. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, wow, he's got a whole lot of little hairs that want to be on there. It's the Entertainment Show with Erica Williams. With special guest Lou Jello, Dennis Preston, plus the home TV band. And now, here's Miss Entertainment herself, Erica Williams. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Entertainment Show. I'm your host, Erica Williams, and thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, your stuff tends to run towards the, um, towards the um, uh, surrealistic. I mean, the rocks that turn into things, and most of the early stuff does. Well, except for, um, well, yeah, like the painting, you know, that uh, that I had in a recent art show. That that does have rocks forming a skull. Uh, the earlier works I had was more of a Dalliistic type style and mm -hmm. a little bit of Magritte. You know, whenever I paint it, I don't get to paint much that anymore. I used to do it to relax. And, <laughs> uh, the, there's not a whole lot of time to relax anymore. Uh -huh. There's more of a relaxing, I don't know, way of expression too, which way of just kicking it out of your head and saying, well, this is how I feel today and do it. Yeah. Uh, you, How did you learn how to play all these instruments? Uh, they were self-taught, actually. Were they really? Okay. Um, what happened was I, I, when I was in a band, I started out playing bass. Mm -hmm. And after I got out of playing in bands, I started getting into more different instruments. And I would hear some, like um, uh, Rod Stewart. Hmm. When Mandolin Wind came out. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I went, I like that. That's so interesting. I, I went out and bought a mandolin right then. And I learned how to play it. Wow. Well, I gotta tell you though, I'm, I don't know every chord on a mandolin, but yeah. I am playing it. Yes, but uh, I make up things. I can play some songs on there. So, where do you where did you record this CD? This was recorded at Illegible Record Studios. Okay, and uh, it's a, a Lansing based label. And there's mm -hmm. other people on the label. That are, they're really good, and they've been around for a while. 
and some of them are going to be playing with me that night too. Mm-hmm. Well, Dennis Preston did the uh, graphics yeah, for him, who's Preston. you know a famous caricature. I think he did some of the HOM TV. Yeah, uh, he'll actually caricatures. be here later in the show. Well, and so. he's got yeah. a he's got a new CD out too. Yep. So, mm-hmm. so he'll be here with us um, later. Good so. friend of ours. He took took me and made me a rabbit with a carrot guitar. Yeah. Uh huh. And Patty just like kind of took his pants off him and put a tail <laughs> well, yeah, on it. It was a monkey. Uh, basically, I paid the guy for taking my pants off and drawing a tail. That was it. So. And that's what he drew on here. Yeah. It is so cute. So when you started this early on, when was your first uh, paying uh, uh, art uh, job? My first paying. Um, it was still in high school. Right? Yeah. Or earlier? Commercial. When you were, when you were seven. No. It, uh, the first paying jobs were actually in junior high. I sold a few paintings, but the commercial art started in 11th grade. That's when I started doing the, the drum heads for local bands and concert posters and uh, logos for them. Yeah. So that's when I, the actual paying commercial art started happening. And uh, it just took off from there. And I'm trying to decide how I'm going to do that many little hairs. So when I'm doing dark hair like that, I usually leave like highlights in it. Right. Sometimes I get these ladies and they sit down and they go, I don't like my hair today, can you change it? I say, oh, well, sure. And I'll change their hair for them. Or they're going, my hair's up, it's usually down. And I said, well, I don't know what it looks like when it's down. They go, well, make something up. I go, all right. Okay, here we go. I think I'm just going to do some cross hatching for all those little things there. He's got growing there. Chaz. Yep. Chaz Meister. So everybody calls you Chaz? Like some teachers in high school. They would call me Charles. They ask Chaz. Do you say, please, please, call me Chaz? <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing, too. People don't always know the word caricatures. I'm listed in the phone pages under entertainment. Somebody calls me up and asks me if I'll dress like Barney. <laughs> <laughs> I go, I don't dress like Barney. Well, who do you dress like? I said, well, yeah. Just wear, you know, depends on the function, you know. If it's a picnic, I'll wear jeans, you know. Well, what, what kind of character is that, you know? I go, what's well, me <laughs> drawing caricatures? Caricatures, what are those? Because they don't even know what the word right, is sometimes, right. you know, so you have to they explain. Think, they think you're going to dress up like a character. That's right. Character. So I have to educate them on that. I go, well, can you dress up like Barney and draw these? I go, no. You can see there's a little bit more squeezing of the features and right. enlarging in that. Right. Because, it, yeah, exaggerate. Over, really overemphasize the eyebrow. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do a bunch of Does that happen a lot? No, I'm not using that. This may get him into a whole new look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But that's the other thing too, and when, when I'm when I tell the students about exaggeration of features, and other people too, when they're asking about, oh, you're gonna make my nose really big. I go, no. You know, it varies on each person, but when you're exaggerating, it's not always making things big. You're spreading features apart. You're pushing them together. Some things you're making smaller. And on him, you can see where I kind of right. brought everything up down here and. Went right. to town on the chin. Right. <laughs> but the bald guys really like this when I do this. Mm-hmm. They get excited. It's cheaper than hair clubs. Yeah. That's what they usually say. They say that and the ladies go, look, you know, I got a chest. I didn't have to go get an operation. <laughs> I got a paper one. They're excited about that. And when I get people that have braces, I, I ask them to. I go, do you want those off? When they're real little, the little kids go, no, no. They think I'm going to actually pull them off. I said, no, I, 
I said, if you don't want them on there, I won't draw them. Yeah. See, now that looks like a Chad. He ought to have a microphone doing a little crooning. Crooning Chad. Yeah. Do you want to show him the, the Elvis? <laughs> yeah. Or not? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just like that. Yeah, convertible. Well, can you, you want to talk about any of your drawing, sure. different drawing styles and maybe your, your approach? I know you're going to do a demonstration uh, of, of your style right, right now, but Talk to me about some of your posters, and you've also got some uh, a fine art pieces here too, as well that are not. I, yep. I wouldn't. I like the cross hatch a lot. I used to stipple. Originally, I was doing a lot of stippling mm -hmm. right out of high school. I used to stipple a lot. Cross hatching is a lot faster for me. And I, there is some stippling on this, and there's a little bit on this one, but that's mostly cross hatching in there too. Mm -hmm. For these, these are cross hatched. And these are for a rock and roll art show that was in Diversions. And so, like, I did these, and there was three other drawings. And I did a, some paintings, too. I was painting and doing some color work, but that's what these three were for. Is this your first CD? No. This, uh, this is the second release I've done. I did one in uh, 1991, and I'm going to be playing two songs off from that album. Mm -hmm. That one did get some airplay. I didn't go out and promote it. It got airplay on college stations, and uh, actually I got some airplay in other countries. Oh, did you really? That's interesting. And and the thing that, yeah, because, like, you know, you're thinking, geez, they're playing this in Moscow. And I had, like, regular back and forth, you Isn't know. Isn't that something? Talking with these guys, yeah. And, and they could were you, giving could away. You, could you understand what they were saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they leave messages, the Christmas messages on my machine, you know, going, Merry Christmas, Danas, you know. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> so we're in a global global uh, community now. But this, but this was before Internet, you know. So this is like, well, not before Internet, but this was like MySpace kind of things mm -hmm. where, mm -hmm. you know, people are still writing and uh, leaving phone messages. Mm -hmm. But it would have, yeah, back then it would have helped me a lot having the MySpace. I'm sure it would have. Now, you have a uh, release coming up uh, tomorrow. It's going to be over at the New Covenant Christian Church. Where's that located? That's on, it's 4415 West St. Joe. And uh, the thing is, it's like free parking for one thing. That's good. Uh, That's good news. Padded pews. Padded pews. Love that. And you're going to uh, perform by yourself or is there going to be an accompaniment? Oh, no. There's going to be quite a few people, actually. Okay, good. There'll be, there'll probably be four or five people that were on the album mm -hmm. playing on certain songs. And then I have other friends that are going to help me out that weren't on there cool. that are really good musicians. And the admission is free, right? No, no. Oh, you guys, okay. <laughs> it well, it's, it's, it's nominal. Five, no, no, no. Five dollars admission. Yeah, That's yeah, not five bad. You know, three dollars for students. students. Yeah. yeah. Did I say free? But you, that, no. Oh, for you, you were saying it for you, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I know the band. Yeah. <laughs> Is that how it works? And I, I've heard it. No. <laughs> five dollars admission. Three dollars for students. Sorry about that, Dennis. <laughs> but uh, sounds like a, a really a cool uh, album. This one was done in uh, 1995. There was a class offered down here, and the and the class. The program being used was Painter, and I, before that, I've never used a computer to illustrate with. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing was new to me, even just using computers. So I didn't know a whole lot. The program is designed for artists to use, and this was like one of the assignments where you had to use flesh tones and hair and things like that. So I decided to do a caricature of Frank Zappa. Just because of the exaggeration thing, and I didn't have to draw something that's kind of realistic, I can just let loose and play with this. So this is a combination of tools that painter can use. I've used some uh, charcoal to do the hair, and like the airbrush tool to do this for the skin. Um, the swirly effect, it's called distorto. What it does is like it takes the pixels and just kind of runs it like it was wet paint, like you were 
running like a stick through the top of a mm -hmm. paint can, you know, and stirring it. So, so the, the, the audience knows this is a, this is a, a digital image, create all digitally on, on the computer yeah. with, with computer tools. And then how, do, how is the printed though? This, a friend of mine printed this out for me actually. And it's printed on a canvas. And um, I got that kind of recently. I think it was, I just got that this year where I had something that big mm -hmm. printed out on a computer. And he has something that takes the pixels and kind of just keeps them in focus because of the original artwork I did at a 72 resolution, but it still looks clear. It still looks very clear. Yeah, it does. And it's not, not pixelated. The edges are sharp. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I was surprised. I was right. impressed, you know, with the quality that he could do. But if you look at this from a distance, it looks like it's something that was, was actually well, airbrushed. It looks like an airbrush. That's right. So even though you draw with traditional media and have since you're in first grade, you're, no, you're not afraid to experiment with new things. Nope. Obviously, I'm not afraid. Yeah, I have tried airbrushing in the past. Mm -hmm. I did it the first time I airbrushed. I ended up doing a, an album cover for a band, and it, originally it was just me playing around. But they ended up using it. But I'm not. I I don't have the patience to do airbrushing or oil painting. Mm -hmm. And when I did get into painting at first, it was with acrylics. But now that I've got this tool, you know, being able to so you have this at, at home? Too? I've got Painter and I got Photoshop. I use mm -hmm. them both. I go back and forth with them. Mm -hmm. So, and sometimes I do mix uh, my things where I'm using an actual drawing and I'll scan it, go in and touch it up. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah. Computers, not afraid of them now. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't afraid of them, just, you're just going, you know, I don't like it. And getting used to drawing Putting your hand down here and looking up here, you're going, hey, this is science fiction, you know, yeah. because you, <laughs> what's going on here, yeah. you know, so that was something that you have to get used to. And, uh, right. Right after I got out of high school is when uh, Free Spirit opened up, and for uh, those who don't know, it's a uh, hippie department store, and it had a little bit of everything, tapestry shop, uh, a head shop, record shop, uh, what else, shoes, clothes, and... I don't know what else to tell you. They had a little restaurant in there, the whole thing. So they're yeah. out of business, aren't they? Long time ago. Well, except for... The sleep shop. Uh, the sleep shop and diversions were actually uh, a shop within the Free Spirit, and they're still around. Mm -hmm. But back then, when Free Spirit came on the scene, a lot of downtown businesses were betting on how long they'd last. <laughs> well, they were in kind of, weren't they in a, like an old renovated, I mean, a, a building that somebody had, some bigger department store had left. It was, didn't seem to me yeah. that it was that... Um, that desirable a, uh, a building. It's not enough. It was bad, but it was no. It, yeah, they had to fix it up some. Big old empty building. I remember they did, when they did that work down. It was about 72, 73, maybe. 69. 69. Yeah. Yeah. Um, With stippling, a lot of people think that when you're drawing and using dots, the shading, they call it pointillism. And pointillism is a painting technique used with color, and stippling is just using. Um, dots the shade width to get different values by using like just a pen, or a pencil or something, but most of the time it's an ink that they're stippling with. And I'm just giving this guy a little bit bolder outline. I tend to do that with a lot of my drawings. Uh, if I'm going to do something that's a line drawing, I'll outline it bolder and the reason for that is I a long time ago, I was influenced by Art Nouveau when I was in high school and some of the, the posters from uh, San Francisco. When they were doing concert posters, they were giving a bolder outline to the figures to make them pop out from the rest. But I don't know exactly how to pronounce his name. Is it Musha? I'm not familiar with that. Right. Alphonse? Alphonse Musha or something. He did that with his figures. What I'm going to do with this guy is just a little head here. I'm going to use some stippling the shading in. So you guys can see here. And what I'm doing are dots for the shaded in area here. And I'm kind of considering up here being the light source coming mm -hmm. down. So where any of these features are kind of like 
casting a shadow or going in a little bit, that's where I'm putting these dots. To give the illusion of, of three-dimensional form. Yep. Mm -hmm. But it's something that I used to do a lot of. So I'll just do a few more dots here just to put a little bit of reflective light look going on some of these things like his nose and his lip. And then I got into doing them faster. The other thing I used too when I was doing them was I was using format shading film. And those gave the illusion of simple stippling. And people used to ask me how I got those dots so straight. When I was using the shading film. You can't right. tell when they're printed. So yeah, you like can still see shading film used a lot in comic strips. Yeah. Is this guy almost done? Yep. Okay. okay, so yeah, definitely get the idea of uh, dots. You pack them together when you want a darker value, you spread them out, lighter lighter value, and try to keep the same size dot is pretty important to give That's the illusion right. of, of it then blending, the eyeball blending it together to, to create a value or a, a, a shade. The other thing, too, is okay. to use a fine point to do this. Mm -hmm. And I tell my students that because some of them are using markers like this, and I said, no, don't do that, you know, because it just makes somebody look sick because they got all these huge dots. Right. I don't mind if they outline with this, but they should use the fine okay. point to do that. Now I'm going to do something no, that's cross-hatching. Cross-hatching, right. Okay. What's the, what are the things you need be, to pay attention to when you're cross-hatching? Okay, when you're cross-hatching, you want equal spacing between the lines. That's one of the styles. There's other styles, but you want that. You don't want to do something that's like this, where it has almost like a broken fence effect. That's not cross-hatching as a shading technique. If you got somebody's, like I said, a broken fence, or somebody's clothing might have something like that. But when you're cross-hatching, you want to get the equal spacing between the lines. And I'll just do a little gradation thing here so you can see. So it's going to come out more like a shading than it is this kind of a thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the eyeball takes takes those lines and, cre and creates some value. Should I draw a quick picture and shade it in? Sure. OK. <clears throat> OK, this here will just be the dog here. Sometimes when I'm doing these, crosshatch pictures too. What I'll do is uh, if it's for a client and they uh, want something in color, there's times when I've, the original drawing is crosshatched. I take it to Kinko's, make a copy of it, and then I color it in with other markers. And I do that so the, the lines won't run. And I think the thing that got me started with the crosshatching is like there's an artist, his name's Rick Griffin. He's, he's dead now, but he used to do comic books and concert posters and album covers. And his cross hatching is amazing. Another guy, his name is Wolverton. His stuff, his stuff is more amazing than Rick Griffin's. And he's the guy that used to do illustrations for Mad Magazine when it first came out. And if you got, saw his picture, he looks like a dentist from back then or something. He just doesn't look like the artwork he was doing. But if anybody wanted to check in some, some really good artists, that's two of them that I would say, is, especially for technique, is, uh, I don't remember his first name, but his last name is Wolverton, and the other one is Rick Griffin. Another good artist is R. Crumb, Robert Crumb. Right. He's got a nice technique. This guy is almost done. And you can see that this is going a lot faster than with the stippling Right, cover is. more area. The, well, the interesting thing about cross-hatching is just by having those lines where they cross, you get that second value. Uh, and it just, and you really haven't done anything other than just cross, cross the lines, and, and the eyeball you know, blends that together. Yeah, that's true. Well, uh, you were saying you would do uh, uh, posters and uh, album covers? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tell me some of the people that you've done uh, the, uh, covers for. Okay, the 
covers um, mostly Michigan bands, local bands, Lansing bands. Uh, let's see, uh, Detroit, uh, Moose and the Sharks uh, from out of Flint. Um, Ron Moore, but that was like his seventh album, but he had me do that. Uh, uh, a couple of the local bands here in Lansing are Exalt and Armada. Mm -hmm. They're uh, Christian heavy metal bands. And um, I'm trying to think of who else I've done. But Christian heavy metal seems almost like a contradiction in terms. Well, it sounds that way to some people, but if you, you heard it, I guess you'd have to uh, say back when they were playing classical Christian music, you know, in the old times, you know, nobody would yeah. think anything of it, you know, yeah. but now, you know, it's kind of like uh, you use whatever you got to use to reach who you're going sure. after. Mm -hmm. So there's people that like the heavy metal stuff, and so it's out there for them. But that, that kind of music, you know, I, I, like, I, like, I like a lot of kinds of music, and I'd say because of the bands that I do work for, I try to capture whatever they sound like in a visual form or the concept of the album. Yeah, that was the next question I was going to ask you, is how, you, um, you know, how do you conceive of, uh, of a cover for a band? It must have to do with either the looks of the band, like if it's a picture of the band, or yeah. some theme in the album. Or, but do they come to you and say, this is what I want? I mean, I suppose if they were so darn smart, they'd draw it themselves. <laughs> some of them are able to, but, <laughs> but what, what happens is that they might uh, show me the lyrics to one of the songs or mm -hmm. something. If there's a title song, um, they'd want that showcased on the front. What they'll do is let me read the lyrics, and I might get an idea from that. And sometimes they have an idea, and I just work off from that. Sometimes it's a, it's a team thing. <laughs> Short history on the song, really quick here, is when I'm recording my album, I'd be kind of doodling around on mm -hmm. my instruments, and mm -hmm. then Eric mm -hmm. goes, that's a song. And I go, no, it's not. <laughs> he goes, yeah, that's a song. That's how songs are born. Yeah, that's what I've been reading too. Some of the, some of the Zeppelin songs are exactly. rock and roll. That's right. Music. Uh, what, what's this? The, you know, the theme song to the car ads. Uh, I know <laughs> what you're talking about, but I can't remember right now. That was that happened right in the studio. Oh yeah, a lot of things happen in the studio. Absolutely. Mm. That's good. <laughs> That was okay. pretty good. Thank you. Yes, I, yes. I shouldn't have stopped him there, though. But <laughs> I, I told you. I, yeah, you told me. During the break, slow songs are hard to stop. I Fast know. songs are easy. Um, well, we're back, and we've got Dennis Preston, um, cartoonist. That ought to be a game in itself. Huh? Oh, yeah, it, it does. It's some practice. It does. <laughs> to stop the band routine. Oh, and we've got Secret Word. Say the secret word. There it is. Say the secret word. Win a free pizza from Bilbo's. Um, we got the Peppermints, the Almost Midnight Studio Band without Henry Loki is known as the Peppermints, and with Henry Loki it's the Almost Midnight Studio Band. Where is Henry tonight? <laughs> Hard to tell. He, he's got a gig with Paul Schaefer or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> he's no stranger to home TV, Mr. Dennis Preston. Uh -oh. <laughs> you didn't want to come behind the curtain, I, I thought it was for you. <laughs> no, it's for you. Welcome to the show. How are you? Have a seat. Why are you looking around the curtain like, is that for me? Who is that for? I know. I thought it was for you. <laughs> How are you? Thank okay. you for joining us. Thank you. Good to see you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You do a lot, but just oh, tell us who mainly Mr. Dennis I'm a... Preston is. <laughs> Listen to you. <laughs> Mainly, I do artwork. Okay. I do illustrations. I do graphic design. I draw caricatures at uh, different events, social functions, parties, conventions, and uh, I teach part time at LCC. Okay. And I've been down there about thirty years. So. Good. The Blue Jello group was here sure, <laughs> before you, and they actually, they perform really well, but you oh. designed their album cover. Yes, I did. And it's so funny. I want people at home to get a chance to see this because <laughs> it's so funny. It looks just like the guys. The one guy being, he looks like a <laughs> monkey. He is a, a monkey. rabbit. Well, monkey. Well, a rabbit and a and monkey. Pat looks like, I don't know what this Pat's is, banana. the banana. He is with the little banana. His little <laughs> smile, it matches his face so funny. Thank you. But on side of graphics, you do music also. I do, yeah. Tell us no. about this album and tell them how it came into fruition. 
What happened was I approached um, Eric Blades, the owner of the label, okay. about releasing some basement tapes I recorded because I recorded a whole lot of songs on my own. Okay. And what he said was like, uh, you know, we, we'd rather record a whole new album with you. And I said, well, okay, you know, so that's, that's where it, it, that's what happened. It just kind of took off from there. The, so what influences your music like? Is, the influence? Yeah. As like, far as the like songwriting or the sound? Or songwriting, like how did you come up with Iceberg? You could have came Iceberg. up with anything else in the world. Iceberg. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how I came up with that. Okay. I'm trying to remember if it's something that I read or that I heard uh, Rick Warren say. Okay, yeah, from The Purpose Driven Life. And it was I during that, that series of okay. something. Something either he said or... or you know, I read that triggered it, like, okay, you're only here for a little bit, and right. people think that this is it. Mm -hmm. Not everybody. You know, believers don't think that. Right. Yeah. Um, but everybody else, they figured, well, once you die, that's, that's, that's it. it. And we're, everything that we see here, you know, there's nothing after this. Right. And so, what I was trying to show through the song, not using like any, um, certain kind of lingo or anything that no there's more to what we see and that's it. yeah and so like this is what we see is like our reality here in the physical but it goes beyond that so once you die it's more this is the tip of the iceberg basically. that's true yeah and the <laughs> thing is is like eternity a lot of people think of it as just being a long time they don't think of it as being a realm as being like something outside of what we are now. Yeah, okay. outside of day and night and time and things. So. That's deep. You're real deep. Uh, well, thank Shine, you. The poets. They yeah. <laughs> well, that's why you know I'm, it's like a simple song, okay. but it does have like a deep meaning to it. Okay. So like, I figured. Well, when I originally wrote it too, I thought, oh, well, maybe I should go into another lyric and explain it. And then I thought, no, you know, this is it. This oh, it doesn't yeah, need any more. That's right and let people uh, read into it what they want to, because it could mean different things to different people. But that's the main thing. There's more to everything than what we see. That's, that's good. That's really good. And there's 14 tracks on this mm -hmm. on this song, so it seems like it's pretty good. I know I like the cover of it, so. Oh, and actually, neat. later in the show, you're actually going to perform, perform the hit Iceberg from here, well, correct? A portion of the song. Okay, good. Because like, it goes into more than what... Um, that you'll perform today. That's right. Okay. It's just like the, the first half of it because the the song just takes off from there. We were talking yeah. about you doing album covers, album covers, and um, and the way that you think up uh, ideas for an album cover. So you were saying they, um, the band usually gives you some lyrics to look at or they got mm -hmm. some concept of, of, of what they want. Mm -hmm. And they're very often unhappy with the result and then they say, nah, this is no good, we, we need something else. Well, it's, since they're on their own, it, it has become a little difficult with the last cover I've done because one of the bands was signed on to a major label and the cover was already done and they like the cover, the band does, and you know, the record company's still kicking around the idea, do we want to use this? You know? Well, because it's too risque or too... Uh... No, it's not risque, but it's pretty heavy duty. You know, it's, <laughs> You know, it's got like a demon looking you right in the eye type thing, and it's, you know, the head's kind of large on there, but it's, uh, I don't know, I, I gotta wait and see what they do, because right now the band's in uh, New Jersey recording the album. Who is it? Exalt. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, they, when they signed on, they said, well, let's re-record the album, but we'll use our producers, you know. That's what the, the company wanted to do. So I'm still waiting to hear on the cover if I have to redo the cover yet. Mm -hmm. So is that common or is that unusual for them to throw it back and say this is just too uh, too much? I don't know. I don't know because uh, it's the first time I'm involved with that big of a label. Most mm -hmm. uh, records, uh, you know, the, the covers that I'm doing are for smaller independent labels. So the bands themselves or those indies get to say what they want to do and um, I haven't had any problem with any other covers. No. Now, when you work with a cover, you probably work with the um, the band itself, right? Maybe one or two members of the band, mm -hmm. you know, because they have an idea what they want to do. Um, 
sometimes what happens is they uh, they might have some rough mixes I can listen to. Well, Dennis Preston, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, good luck uh, tomorrow night. Uh, check it out at the New Covenant Christian Church and. Uh, $5 admission, $3 for students. Uh, the new album is called uh, Iceberg. Let's give a Iceberg. listen, okay? This is 89.7 FM. So who else have you done uh, 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 posters for? Oh, Ravi Shankar, um, Paul Revere and the Raiders, Three Dog Night, let's see, the Guess Who, the Birds, Big Brother and a Holding Company, um, Ike and Tina Turner. I'm trying to think of all these things. Yeah, it's, it's like what, digging back in a file thing and they're 15, not alphabetical. 20 years, right? Yeah, 20 years. Yeah. Time to check back in with our artist, Dennis Preston over here, who's been very busy since we've showed up at the Michigan Fest. Dennis, what are you doing? I'm drawing this guy here, but he can't help it. <laughs> what do you mean he can't help it? Well, we got him off that bus over there. This is Chief. This is Chief. This Thank is you, Chief. Chief, for doing this. And Dennis, do you do this for fun, or do you do this for your full-time profession? No, this is a part-time job. I do mostly commercial art, and I do this at uh, mostly conventions and parties. Why do you like doing this? Well, it's a good way to pick on people. No, it's fun. It's a fun job. <laughs> what kind of reactions do you get from people that you're sketching? Uh, they vary. Most of the time, uh, they, they like it. I hardly get anybody that doesn't like it. You mentioned to me earlier you have a different philosophy in drawing men than women. What's the difference? Guys already look like cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> but your main job don't blow my cool. but the main job is to make people look great right that's right well, what do you, what do you think chief do you think this looks like you no. <laughs> that's me man that's me that's you well now now we're gonna go back to Jane Aldridge now we got some examples here too of some stuff you've done yep um, I can see the director is setting up for a shot of this stuff uh, <laughs> I've been repositioning the cameras for like 10 minutes here to get this um, Tell me a little about, about what we have here. Okay, the first two. And the first two from the left or the right? Right, the first square the ones. Smaller ones, uh huh? Those are the album covers. Okay, the first one's for Exalt. The name of the album is called Dark War. And what you have there is like an angel kind of standing victorious there on top of the logo, and all these uh, bad guys are dumped down all around him. My nephew posed for that. He held an umbrella on a picnic table. <laughs> 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 he did. I took photos. <laughs> Uh, and he's, he's the uh, little blue uh, bad guy in the corner, too. He laid down on the picnic table with his face up, you know, so. Um, and the other one there, Armada, the name of that album is called Frontline. And basically what you got there is Satan, kind of like in a general's uniform. And it's taken from the lyrics where it says it was going to crush him with an iron, iron claw or whatever. Uh -huh. And so like this iron claw is coming up and it's grabbing him by the collar and kind of ripping it from his controls in the background. You can see where it says like, hey, uh, murder, sin boost. Uh, I don't know what else is on there from here. But um, a local printer and another printer pro posed for that. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was, it was, you know, and then... Um, Okay, this third one over here, that's a painting I've worked on off and on for I don't know how many years because I didn't know how to finish it. I had different ideas on what I wanted to do, but I wanted to do the crucifixion more, more than having dots of blood on the guy and making him more like scripture said, being naked and kind of symbolizing the hill of the skull. I put the skull there forming out of rock and where it says worthy you know there's a scripture reference above it just saying you know who's worthy to undo the scroll and it goes on saying the lamb that was slain for our sins and this one happened to be in a show not too long ago for the show was about censorship mm -hmm. and it had to do with lcc's art show that was censored and a group of us artists got together and put on this art show and the thing was, uh, this almost got censored. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. Yeah, yeah they, uh, they did, 
there was people that didn't want it in the show. Sure. So what they ended up doing was putting it back by the bathrooms, so you could see it when you came out of the restrooms, but it wasn't <laughs> out with the rest of the artwork. Uh -huh. And the thing that was funny was when the state news did the article on me, um, I guess they were trying to make me feel nice. In the article, it says it was featured at the art show. You know, so if there's any of the other artists watching, I, I don't get any bad feelings. It wasn't my idea. <laughs> <laughs> well. So when you when you do I mean these these pictures are all pretty I mean they they evoke a lot of images uh, don't you don't you run the risk of uh, particularly when you're doing it for for religious groups of having somebody off on the fringes somewhere saying you know this is like uh, listen to the lyrics backwards or uh, look at this uh, look at this drawing real closely and you'll find out that this is really not um, uh, on the up and up it's really the work of the devil or somehow evil or something like that I mean well you because your stuff is kind of dark actually. It is. You're you're bound to get somebody like that. But I'm uh, I'm just an FM kind of guy. You know I. Uh, you know there's people that like organ music and things like that, and there's people that like rock and roll. And in the same way with art, there's people that like to see Jesus holding a lamb, and then there's some that say you know say it like it is. And that's more like me with my artwork. I say it like it is for me. You know. Mm -hmm. And I can't judge those people, you know, as far as them saying, that's not a nice picture, you know. I, Well, I, I can't help that. Sure. You know, it's, it's more of an editorial type thing. It's, mm -hmm. I don't know what else you could say about it. <laughs> well, we need to take another break. Well, I can tell you one thing real quick. Okay. Uh, there were some people that said they wouldn't come back into the restaurant until that artwork was down. <laughs> really? Really? See, I would think that a lot of people would, I mean, I personally don't find this so terribly offensive. But it is very um, emotionally evoking. I mean, it, 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 you know, you get a reaction from it. And, and I guess I try to stay away from taking positions, but mm -hmm. that's what art's supposed to do in my book. It's supposed to bring it, uh, evoke an emotion. It should make you feel good or bad or scared or oh, something, yeah. but it'll bring something out of you when you look at it. it bring, and I would say that that certainly does that. Let's uh, talk about uh, what's happening uh, around town here when it comes to blues. Well, this weekend, um, the Old Town Band, Bill Malone and company, are out at Sportsman and Mulligan. We're at the Colonial. Um, of course, I had, uh, I, I laughed and told Jim, I'm underlining that I wanted to talk about Dennis's show, and then we walked in and looked, and there was Dennis. <laughs> yes. There he was. He was he was on with you. He's a great guy, uh, indeed. And uh, I um, wonder, because I, I didn't see the beginning of your interview. Did did you touch on the fact that most people that live in Lansing have seen Dennis's art? At oh yeah. One, yeah we at one point or the other, we talked about that. I mean, he's no done doubt. caricatures for just about everybody and uh, in in town. Oh. I, I have to tell you, it's and it's just uplifting stuff. Just when you look at it, you go, "Wow!" Uh, several several years ago, I had to have uh, um, some medical issues addressed, and I'm laying in the hospital, and I get this card, and it's Dennis has done this caricature of me, and it's like, "Ha ha!" I couldn't stop laughing. Okay, we're gonna break for a short commercial break, and we're gonna come back, and we're gonna talk about um, caricatures. You can do that. Caricatures. All right, <laughs> you're making me laugh now. Okay. No. <laughs> we're going to come back. We're going to talk about caricatures. Yeah. With Dennis Preston, the cartoonist. So stay with us, and we'll be back. And um, don't go away. So stay with us. Before we go, tell us this instrument that you'll be performing with when you come back later in the show. What's it's the a it's it? a mountain dulcimer. Mountain dulcimer. It's a mountain dulcimer, but sometimes they call it a lap dulcimer or an Appalachian dulcimer. Okay. And a lot of times when you tell people dulcimer, the first thing they think of is a hammer dulcimer. Yeah, one of but, the studio guys, the the camera guys, was saying that was who's actually was that one. Yeah, okay. but it's. No, it's just, uh, and, and the thing too is like, I hold it more like a guitar rather than flat the okay. way it's supposed to be played. Okay. So well, if somebody- we'll looking forward to seeing Oh, it. okay. I was gonna say, <laughs> if somebody that's really into, you know, seeing traditional music, they're going, he's not holding that right, it's you know? okay, it's all in how you play it. So, oh, well, we thanks. like your style. Thank you, Mr. Preston. Thanks we for having me We look forward to hearing show. you. We'll see you around, I'm quite sure. Okay. With a man around Lansing, East Lansing, Michigan, I, probably. 
I do get around Michigan. Yeah. Good. So good. Thank you for gracing your presence with us. Thank I'll you. Listen to you. We'll be right back. <laughs> And we've got Dennis Preston in the band, and the band is cooking up some numbers. Yeah. Hey, are you related to Dick Preston by any chance? I hear that a lot. No. You look a lot like him. Then. Uh, I, a lot of people ask me if I'm related to Pat Preston too, and they ask her if they she's related to me. me they ask you that? If I'm related to Pat. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> do they ask sort you? Of a concept joke, are you related to Pat? No. Do they, they ask you if you're related to Press Cool? No, not Press Cool. No, I haven't gotten any of those yet. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're back. We got the peppermints on uh, on music over there. Um, Why are they the peppermints? Because that's their name. Why? Are you related to uh, <laughs> to the spearmints? We had them on the show last week. The spearmints. Um, so oh, there you go. We got peppermints. It was Halloween, and now we got peppermints all over the set. Visual aid. Uh, every time I every time I sit down, I got a peppermint on my desk. Um, so we were talking about, uh, we we're going to talk about car caricatures. Caricatures. Well, I guess it depends on where you're from. Some people might say caricatures. Uh, well, I never <laughs> did know how to pronounce it. Uh, that's something you've gotten into a little more recently. Well, entertainment-wise, I have recently. Because uh, it's, uh, I've always done them, but I probably started when I was about 7 or 10 on that. I used to pick on my brother and his friends. I used to give my brother a, a melon head. You know, and I put the stripes on the side of his head, and then I give him bird legs, you know, and put little rings around him, you know. And uh, he had different kinds of friends. I, one of them had like a big head, and the other one had cheeks like this. Yeah. You know, and called him Fat Cheeks, a pretty original name, but uh, <laughs> anyways, that's how I started. And then I, from there, um, I was doing caricatures for radio stations for their... I don't know what you call them now. What are those things that, that say the the top songs and all this in there? The what? Playlist? Kind of like a playlist, but it was saying... Huh. Yeah, the top, kind of like a top 40 list. Sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here playing a game with the peppermints. <laughs> no. So I started doing them that way, commercial art-wise. They would put their DJs on the front of these things, and that's how... Oh, uh, yeah, caricatures of the DJs, right? Caricatures of the DJs, Caric and that's a big thing. DJs like having their caricatures done. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, in the, uh, let's see, 84 is when I started doing it as an entertainment thing, going out, doing parties, conventions, bar mitzvahs. Uh, I did the circus. The circus was the first one I've done. Now, when you when you say entertainment, I'm not sure why why do you say that's I mean, isn't that like I mean, that's drawing. It's it's drawing, but it crosses over. It crosses over from being art into entertainment because once you start doing that, your uh, people are laughing, you know. And like if you're just doing a drawing of a horse, you know, who's going to come up and laugh at it unless you you don't draw them very good? <laughs> uh, but. No, it's 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 a entertainment alternative. That's what I call it, because you know, rather than having like a magician come in there and do card tricks or or uh, a band, no, <laughs> no bands are fine, but no, rather it's just another way of uh, entertaining people, their guests. The guests get to walk away with something too. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I know she got something on your ear, like a quick draw. That's my holster. It's your holster. Those yeah. are. <laughs> Those are, uh, uh, usually, uh, I used to stuff them in my pockets, you know, but then, like, when you start seeing these big circles of black, you know. There's no cap like, on that. Do you just keep them in there without a cap? No, there's a cap there. Oh, it just, just fell out. Yeah. He's <laughs> <laughs> leaking there. You know? Wanda likes it. <laughs> is it, is it it's they're a, all black? They're all the same? They're all black. Different tip sizes or something? Uh, I got two fine points and a broad. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. <laughs> she likes that. Well, Wanda's pretty uh, unique. Yes, uh, she is. The lovely and talented. Um, well, I work in black. I work in black because I got it down to timing on doing caricatures, and I want people to get more mileage than hanging it. I want them to be able to reduce it down, use it on memo pads, and uh, what else, business cards, letterheads. 
band promo. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> now, car caricaturing, right? Caricature. Caricaturing is uh, really kind of cartoony. It's very cartoony. Uh, well, there's you know, a, well, there's you a, know, we ought to explain it too for the audience to get to, you know, a caricature is when you take a, a, you draw somebody's likeness, only you exaggerate their features. You pick, right. pick on them, like you said with the kids. Yeah. Well, it's good that you said exaggerate too, because like some people, uh, huh. hey, the? Well, we'll, uh, well, we'll get to that. <laughs> It's because, like, some people think it's distortion, and it's not distortion, it's, it's exaggeration. Uh -huh. The uh, distortion comes off kind of negative. Exaggeration is where you play up or play down features. It's not always making a big no. Sometimes you're bringing in the eyes closer. And, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, well, the other thing I have to say, too, is, like, for me, I have different degrees of exaggeration. I can do something that's kind of mildly exagger exaggerated, or I slip into ultra. That's what I call it. Slipping into ultra. That's when you get somebody that's really mouthy in line going, oh, 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 you know, and <laughs> by the time that he gets up there, everybody's going, get him, get him, and then you slip into ultra, and you just go, whap, 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 and get him really good, and everybody's glad that he got it. Yeah. <laughs> so if he's got a, a bit of a big nose, you give him a really big nose. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Take every, everything he hates about himself, and you make it bigger. Well, i got to tell you about this one guy, though. This one guy, it was like a class reunion, and they go, this guy really likes Fred Flintstone, you know, and his wife's telling me this and his best friend's saying, he likes Fred Flintstone. And they have to go out and find him. He's wandering around and he, he has a few drinks and he comes up and I go, well, this guy likes Fred Flintstone. I better do something he's going to like, you know. So I did his wife and I drew him next to him, but I put Fred's haircut on him. Uh -huh. You know, there's nothing on the side and you got those three things hanging down and the, the points in the front. I, and then I rip it off and I give him to him. What's this? They said you like Fred. They go, I don't like Fred. You know, they tease him because they uh -huh. said he looks like Fred. And he oh, did it. He had that yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did have Fred's face. <laughs> that is funny. I bet, you, I bet you that's a lot of fun to do, too. Yeah. Yeah, I get a lot of fun doing it. It's, I don't know what you were going to do. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, we're going to do a, so, uh, some caricatures here, and we're going to position a camera behind you so our audience can watch. Right? Right. Um, so... Let's see, Mr. Floor Director, are we at commercial break time, approximately? I think we are. We're going to take a, um, a commercial break. <laughs> we just turned all the lights off. Yeah. Well, who knows Bye. what's going on. <laughs> We're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, um, the band's going to play, and Dennis is going to do a little caricature of the band, and then uh, caricature, a little caricature <laughs> of the Say it the, the way band. you want. It's your show. Okay. <laughs> uh, caricature. And... Um, and then you're gonna get to see it. So uh, we're gonna have a little commercial break and stay with us. We're gonna be right back. Florida, a seven-year-old boy approached a fellow classmate with a loaded 38 and demanded sex. When asked about what it, <laughs> when asked about it, he said he didn't know, but he said he heard it. Sorry, I'll call back. I can hear the ice beat of drum. People singing songs so sweet. I can feel the and we're going to do a caricature All right. of the band. And um, so I think if we're ready, uh, we're ready. Oh, we're ready. So uh, anytime you're ready. What would you like to draw by? Yeah, a little music to draw by. What would you like? Let, let, let's do some blues. Blues is nice. Uh, that or uh, um, bluegrass. Either. Sure, anything you guys want to play, you know. Okay. Don't, don't make me fall asleep. I might need to have him look at me once in a while. 
Yeah, like that. <laughs> of the peppermints, the caricature by Preston. Uh, maybe I should have put stripes on them, eh? 
<laughs> that's, that's nice. You guys here? You can pass that on to the band. Um, yeah. Yeah. You can. Now we can use that. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. To, I, I, I know that you were laughing. You were having a good time doing that. Yeah. Yeah. What? What is it? That, <laughs> they go. What are we doing with it now? <laughs> T-shirts. Now, who's the other guy that he's off doing something, isn't he? Uh, no, he's not. He's he's the almost uh, midnight band. Yeah. 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 Well, he's out of luck then. Well, that, <laughs> so tell me, as you draw that, what is it that makes you laugh like that? Because I'm sitting here next to you, and every once in a while you're bursting into laughter. I'm trying to figure out what that's about. It's yeah. uh, I know. I do that in. Uh, I guess I'm amusing myself. I don't. I don't <laughs> <laughs> do you see things about them and then you laugh about them? Yeah, I do. Yeah, because I, when I when I see people, it's kind of like watching cartoons all the time. Or I, I can't I can't turn it off. You know, the hardest thing is walking by somebody downtown, going, "Geez, easy looking." You know, <laughs> you know that happens at parties too, because some of the the best and easiest people just walk right on by and and they know it. They know. Yeah, if you got a hold of my face. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, I guess that's the thing. I, I see people kind of uh, like uh, in a cartoon form. I'm, I like watching people. It's kind of a, well, I guess it's a <laughs> inexpensive hobby. <laughs> sure. When you teach cartooning, what, uh, what, are you, what are you teaching? What do you focus on? How do you teach them to do this? Uh, how I teach them to do the caricatures? Oh, yeah, or cartooning in general. Well, when I'm doing just cartooning in general, I, I teach how to do expressions and actions and head shapes, um, drawing techniques. I teach them how to do animals and objects, how to, uh, you know, like make an object and give it character, you know, like the horn there or something like that, giving it eyes and a mouth and and things <laughs> like taking a watermelon and making it into your your brother. No, that's a, no. I was taking my brother and making them into a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 that kind of a thing. And it's instructing somebody how to see something and exaggerate it. Um, but it's better if somebody knows how to draw something lifelike first, so they know how to break the rules. Sure. You know. Sure. So like, if, if you were to do like. And an arm with an elbow, and if you see Mickey Mouse, you rarely rarely see him with an elbow. Yeah, yeah he's just, just kind of a arms, two yeah. arm. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like a name somebody would call somebody. Hey, two arm. You know, <laughs> it's like peanut head. And, you know, sure. the, the, <laughs> you're, you're not a peanut head, but I'm, oh, <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't want it to sound like I. Called yeah, you're sitting head. in the back of your <laughs> mind saying, "I got to get out and get yeah, him." I, I, I did, him. Yeah, there. Yeah, it's easy to uh, slip into that into my brain. You're I'm, still teaching. I'm teaching. At LCC. LCC. So if, yeah. our, if our viewers find this fun or interesting and think they have a knack for it, they could uh, take a class from you, the yeah. master himself. I'm not a master. I'm having fun doing it. Yeah. And <laughs> you're doing a good job of it. Well, thank you. Um, it's about time for another one of our little breaks. And um, we're going to come back and do another one, right? Sure. We're going to caricature the, the director. No, no, no. no. We're going to do Rex. Rex. No. Yo, Rex. Rex. <laughs> we'll be back <laughs> after we calm the crew down. Okay. So stay with us. And um, Dennis Preston, a local cartoonist, is going to do a caricature of Rex, the, di <laughs> of the director. So we'll be back. <laughs> You guys are going to end up on the editing room floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to do a caricature now of uh, our director. So, um... Rex. 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 Nobody in the audience ever gets to see the director. That's no, the there about me. it. Um, <laughs> And now you know why. <laughs> no, he's not there so bad. Help, I'm a cartoon. Game, <laughs> okay, so we got some more car caricaturing yeah, music. Part of my caricature. Yeah. We got some purple haze. Something, a little something to draw Rex by. Rex, what do you like? Heavy metal. Oh. Heavy metal. My, my, yeah. son, my son wouldn't forgive me. Okay. Uh oh, here they go. You got Van Halen on that thing, there, Rex? <laughs> <laughs>
Guys, don't go away. Don't go away. Let's do. We're gonna do something real quick here for Rex. I usually do this for people that he's not that way, but I usually do this for people that don't have any hair, and I. <laughs> I go, hey. I go, hey. I can fix you up. Look at this. See. Hey, Rex, you listening to the police calls on there? He's not. Uh, <laughs> I've got my. Uh, my uh, director counterpart here. I got, uh, He's directing Dan airplanes director. over that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, you ought to cue that uh, movie up because we're going to play that uh, home movie next. See, I usually do this for bald headed guys. Bald headed guys take about a minute and a half to draw. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just an egg shape, that's it, right? Just about. Okay, we'll but there he is. Look at this, X. All right! <laughs> Animation! <laughs> <laughs> Here's your cartoon for the month. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What are you going to do you. with that? That's very that's good. I'm going to hide that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can print t-shirts and have your own fan club. Okay. We're going to take a little switch here, and we're going to do um, do uh, the the home movie segment. Home, this is home movie Dennis Preston's video. home movie. So if you like that home movie, send us yours. We'll put yours on, too. Anytime you're ready, Dan. Director Dan. Switches. Oh, you guys are not set up. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're just, uh, <laughs> you know what they, you know what they do when they, they do this? They go stretch, oh, stretch, stretch well, a little bit. See, see, like Rex has his vegetation show on here. Sometimes, uh... My, my vegetation. Vegetation. It's hairy chest. Yeah. We haven't yeah. got the hairy chest on, uh, on Rex. I don't mean to pick on your Rex, but... <laughs> okay. Is he ready? Uh, we're ready to go. We're ready. We're going to cut to this uh, this home movie, so uh, it's a, have a good time. It's about three minutes, and we'll be back. Okay. Two, one. Feeling kind of mellow Time to watch History in the making The streets for your eyes Will be no badly aching Sitting around Watching home turns on the screen Laugh at the head back till you get the hiccup Time to watch history in the making Treats for your eyes will be no belly aching Sitting around watching home I'm sitting around, watching 
Thank you to Dennis for being Thanks for being on the show, Dennis. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Preston. another edition of the entertainment show. I actually had another good show. I think we we always have a good show.